Holmes Lake, my sanctuary. You're the only place where I can think clearly. You're calm, relaxed, and you don't judge. You're just real. I've been coming to you for years for help with my writing. You've shown me everything you have to offer, and I haven't given anything back. That's wrong. So now, I'm going to tell you everything. Here it goes. My name is Dayton Steps, and I believe there's a beast inside all of us. No matter what you do to control it, it's still there. But I'm living with a monster. A monster that controls me. I'm still there. My thoughts are still swirling. But it takes over entirely and I can't calm down. It's like a wolf, the way it stalks my mind. There's no way to relax my frustration. My anger just consumes me, like a current pulling me underwater. It has been a problem since I was about 14. One day, my parents' cat was being a pest and was coming into my room when I knew it shouldn't. So I tossed him across the room onto the tile floor. He was fine, but I knew it was dangerous. Then I had an encounter with a man in my class who kept trying to undermine me. So I called him out on it one time. When he answered with sarcasm, I punched him in the class. After chatting with the principal, I spent the rest of high school and two years of college trying to control it. Anger management, medication, meditation. I must admit, I felt a lot better. I felt like I was growing up and handling this appropriately. But that good feeling died with the hitchhiker I picked up one night. He was a Jesus freak who went on and on. You're going to hell if you're this. You're going to hell if you do that. And after only about 10 minutes in the car, he took off his shoes and put his feet on the dashboard. When I asked him nicely to put his feet down, he said, only the devil gives offers with stipulations. Was he seriously calling me the devil? Was he saying I was damned after showing him compassion? Between the ungodly smell and his persistent condemnations, I lost it! And out came this beast! I smashed his head on the dashboard and stopped the car. Bloody and shaking, he stumbled out of the car, screaming and trying to run. But a beast with incentive can catch any man. That night, I accepted that I couldn't control its urge to kill. It's like it is righting the wrongs I encounter in my life, but why be so gruesome? Isn't killing wrong? I, I, I have to live with this every day, chasing answers that never show. And in the meantime, people die by my hands. I've killed a few more times since the hitchhiker. I overdefended myself from a mugger a couple months ago. Then I killed my girlfriend of a year who was cheating on me. And then a party girl who was cutting her wrist in an alley for fun. And then there was another girl tonight. This one broke my heart. I met her last week as I was walking in the park. Her name was Jessica, Jessica Blue. I saw her jogging on the trail and the car was coming fast. So I sprinted to grab her. I saved her life. After some introduction, she took me out for lunch. We talked for an hour about our jobs and where we were from. Then I took her home. When I called, she seemed more distant when I started asking about her previous relationships. And pretty soon she stopped answering my calls altogether. Then, tonight she finally answered. And she told me she didn't mean to lead me on. She didn't think this was a relationship, so I should stop calling her. When she hung up, the man that called her was gone, and the beast was back. So I drove to her house when I knew she'd be asleep. And, as a wolf eyes a dying deer, I slipped in, crept up to her bed, and choked the unappreciative life out of her. I don't think I can get away with this one. Jessica was loved by many people. Police will investigate, my name will be mentioned, and it won't be hard to find a poetry professor at a state university. In a small city like this, they'll spend day and night raking up enough evidence to pin on me. <laughs> my actual crime will take away from their everyday traffic violations and party breakups. Cops can become pricks sometimes when they don't have anything to do. Don't they realize that kids just won't get the most out of life? Especially when they're in college? I believe if you don't take advantage of what you got, you don't deserve to have it. Now, I don't teach what I believe. That's what priests do. I leave everything open for interpretation so my students can get what they want out of life. And I tell them that the first day. Every semester, my first assignment is a potted plant. I tell them to study this plant the entire class period and write down as many characteristics of this plant as they can. 
then, once they're in a larger surrounding, they won't just look at the sidewalk that takes them to their destination, they'll look at the scenery man and mother nature have given them. Thus, they can see everything life has to offer. That's how I've lived my life. And that's why I've taken up poetry. It's infinite with endless possibilities. Nobody thinks the way I do. Nobody lives life like I do. I am an abomination. The wolf will never be tamed. I could turn myself in right now for killing Jessica, be locked away in a maximum security prison. But it won't matter. I'll be sodomized, beaten, humiliated, or cut. But eventually, the beast will take revenge and kill again to make things right. If I commit myself for thinking the way I do, they'll just shoot me up with meds, only putting a shell around it, just locking up the wolf. But one day, they may allow too much time between doses, and it will crack the shell in return, probably stronger for being forcibly contained, and turn the needle on the doctor's temple. Nothing can stop the wolf. I accepted that a long time ago. I realize it's my destiny, and if I fight it, it will destroy me. But I'm more than just a killer. I know it's not right, but I can't stop it. So it happens. I kill, again, and again. So if killing is human, knowing it's wrong is divine, and letting it happen is satanic, what am I? Words have always spoken to me. This is how I've handled my sufferings. And now, as we part ways for the final time, I leave you with my last work. Since you've always been there, I know you'll appreciate it the most, for you are my sanctuary. Here it is, my final howl. The Steppenwolf. Myths make men, but what fool would be chosen for the wolf of the steppes? Dark hairy thickets of unconsciousness claw the moon. The moon has no claws, but I metamorphosed mine over six dark tries at dying. Poetry was my tortured night's halo. Sixteen years of fangs and slashed memories spilling language over the paper like a woman's rich red blood. I stalk for more, and the moon is full, and my hair distends to a woman's scream at the blackest hour. I crouch and howl. A happy ending? I'd howl my madness at the moon. The moon is a bitch and the sun will not climb over the horizon's bruised lip. Our top story tonight, a woman found dead in her bedroom this morning. Police believe it could be connected to two other deaths from last month. In all three cases, the victims were women and were all strangled to death.